and welcome to day 22 of the 24 day physics extravaganza and what I've got here is an interesting question that is no maths just all writing about simple harmonic motion and the reason I can tell you this is simple harmonic motion is because one of the kind of the words that they're talking about here vibrations etc so when you see the words oscillation or vibration it normally means SHM so let's actually delve into this so a mass is attached at one end to a spring and the other from a support rod the support rod oscillates vertically, causing the mass to perform forced vibrations. Under certain consistence, the system may demonstrate resonance. Explaining your answer what is missed by force, um, force vibrations and resonance, you should turn to the frequency, the amplitude, and the phase of the um, vibrations. So I've got four marks. Um, so I've got two things to talk about. So I'm going to talk about two things in each. So it wants me to explain what is meant by forced vibration. So a forced vibration, of course, is... Uh, having an external force acting on the system. In this system, that would be the motion of the support rod. In this system, that is the up down motion of the support rod. So if they're asking you to explain some key terms about a system, the a force vibration is basically uh, sort of causing to oscillate with an external force, but they've given me a system to talk about. So I'm gonna be a little bit of a system. So I have an external force acting on the system, this causes the up down motion of the support, which causes uh, vibrations, vibrations in the spring system. So I haven't actually, frustratingly, I haven't mentioned anything about frequency, amplitude, or phase. That's predominantly to do with resonance, okay? But what I'm saying here, a force vibration is when you are vibrating something with an external force. So you have a system, in this case, just a spring in a mass, okay? It's quite happy. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take a support one and you're going to, um, uh, start forcing it to oscillate. It's not a natural thing, you are forcing it to oscillate. Okay, so resonance, okay, the, uh, it's asking you what resonance here is. So resonance is when the forced vibration is at the same frequency as the natural, oops, natural frequency of the system, okay? The system will oscillate, ugh, can't spell today, oscillate with maximum amplitude okay because maximum energy is transferred so looking up here at what i've done i've mentioned the frequency i've mentioned the amplitude but i haven't mentioned the phase so i'm going to actually slip that in now onto resonance okay um and this is something that's normally one of those things that uh, it's like for example i know when i teach it it's a very small bit i mention <laughs> okay um the uh it's just a very small bit i've actually mentioned in my system but it's just that, that, that i'm literally looking i'm writing quite a long answer I'm looking and ticking off the things that I've spoken about. So I've spoken about the force vibrations at the same frequency as the natural frequency of the system. I've mentioned the frequency. The system will oscillate with the maximum amplitude because there's maximum energy transferred. That's the definition of resonance. The, they've mentioned about phase. Um, the forced vibration must be pi by two out of phase with the system 
Okay, so this is just something I, I normally teach about it a bit later. But if you actually think about it, when you're on a swing, where do you actually do most of your pushing? You actually do it at the bottom. You're out by um, pi by two, you're out by 90 degrees. If you think about it, you go in a swing, uh, zero, 180, 360. Where you put the force on the swing to actually make you go higher, to have that maximum energy transfer is at the bottom of the swing. So you are adding your force out of phase with the oscillation of the swing by pi by two, okay? So even though I've, it's actually four marks, what I've done is, yes, I have written more bullet points than usual, but I was trying to make sure that I was asking all the questions. So actually, if you look at the mark scheme here, so force vibrations are repeated up and down, move, well, sorry, wait, it says max four, which means that I must have said at least four of these things. So force vibrations, the repeated up and down motions, vibrations at the frequency of the support rod, Okay, amplitude is small at high frequency or low at high frequency. Resonance is the frequency of what was, or the driver is equal to the natural frequency. I did said that. Large or maximum amplitude of mass. I actually said the next one, which was the maximum energy transfer from the mass of spring system. And then correct reference to the phase difference between displacements of driving force vibrations, which basically is pi by two out. Okay, so you can, I actually didn't have to write that pi by two. All my definitions before would have given me the four marks. But what I was doing was trying to make sure that I actually hit exactly what this question was asking by literally ticking off. Have I mentioned the frequency? Yes, I have. Have I mentioned the amplitude? Yes, I have. Have I mentioned the phase? Yes, I have. And it's just one of those things I kind of want to measure. This little bit here, this this tiny phrase here, whoops, um, of the four to meter pi by two out of phase with the systems, okay. Oh, doesn't want to go into highlighter mode today. There we go. So there we go. This phrase here is quite a strange one, and like I said, I don't, I don't dedicate lots of time to teaching it. I normally dedicate a very small part of the lesson, but it does come up every so often. So it's just really important that you know the force vibration must be pi by out of pi by two out of phase with the phase of the system's vibrations. Okay, and I'll put that in a little bit, so system's vibrations. Okay, all right, so now we're going to a spring, uh, a pendulum system. A simple pendulum is set up by a suspending light paper cone acting as a pendulum bob at the, at the crease at uh, the end of a thin length thread. A metal ring will be placed over the cone to increase the mass of the bob, as shown. The bob is displaced and released so that it oscillates in a vertical plane. The oscillations are subject to damping, so it's just oscillating like that, okay? The oscillations of the pendulum are more heavily damped when the cone oscillates. Are the oscillations of the pendulum more heavily damped when the cone oscillates with the metal ring, without the ring, or does it have no effect? Now, I've had this question numerous times, and it's... Uh, <laughs> It's caused a lot of contention. We always argue about this one. I'm actually going to try and explain what the answer is. So the, the oscillations actually are going to be the most without the ring. And I'll explain why. Okay. So explain why I've put that. Okay. So what's causing the damping in this system, of course, is air resistance. So damping in the system is caused by air resistance, okay? The ring does not affect the area which causes the air. Uh, does not affect the air that causes the air resistance. Okay, so you're going to put the ring on top of it. The air resistance will still cause an effect on the same amount of area. So it doesn't matter if it whizzes or not. Okay. Now this is the bit that I've. Tr it's one of those things that I've always talked about with my students, and they understand it when you kind of walk it through. Because they immediately, I normally get the argument that students think it's with the ring, or students think it's no effect. Um, but actually, what, what it really is happening is all to do with the effect of damping, okay? So it says more heavily damped. So they're going to be damped no matter what, okay? And it's this phrase here, more heavily damped when the cone oscillates with the ring, without the ring, or has no effect, okay? So explain my answer in part I. So I'm explaining it by saying, I know where the, air, I know where the damping comes from. It comes from air resistance. 
I know that the ring does not affect the area which causes the air resistance, okay? The ring increases the mass, okay? Which would increase the kinetic energy at a given amplitude. Okay, so that mass would increase, okay, that mass would increase the kinetic energy, okay. So the velocity would um, be the same in every single situation because A equals V squared um, over R, okay. Um, so it will, the velocity would stay the same, but because I've got a bigger mass, I would have more kinetic energy. Oops. So what it actually means is that it's up more heavily damped. So let's say damping here, the air resistance causes 10% uh, loss of energy, okay? So per swing, I'm gonna lose 10% of my energy. Because the, the uh, one with the ring has more kinetic energy, okay? Because that's what air resistance is. Air resistance is directly related to kinetic energy, okay? If you think about it, if you stand still, you don't feel air resistance. The faster you go, okay, the more air resistance you feel, okay? So the re-increase in the would increase the kinetic energy of a given amplitude, okay? So if you can imagine, without the ring, I have 100 joules of kinetic energy um, because of a mass. Um, so let's actually give you some examples. So let's have an example here. I've got m equals one, m equals two, and we're not talking about that one. So this one, let's say I've got m v squared. This is going to be two m v squared because the velocities are going to be the same because uh, they may be moved out the same place, etc. So their velocities are going to be the same. Okay, but what's actually going to happen for a given amplitude? This situation is going to have more mass. So let's actually say that this one, of course, would have 100 joules. This one here would have 200 joules. Okay, it will have twice the amount of energy because it's got twice the mass. So if air resistance is taking 10% each swing, in this case, what's actually going to happen is you're going to notice that this one will lose energy, um, more energy. No, this one will lose energy more noticeably than this one, okay? Because it will still have more energy in the system than this position here. And of course, when it's got kinetic energy, that causes um, how far it can go up, etc., like that. So the ring increases the mass, which increases the kinetic energy of a given amplitude. Okay, therefore, when losing energy or kinetic energy in particular, that's what I'm talking about here. Woo, Ke, the larger mass would be less noticeable, okay, than the uh, without the ring, because it still would be moving. Okay, the, this one would go to zero quicker than this one. Okay, so if you think about it, damping is all about slowing that system down to a stop. This system, because it starts with less energy, kinetic wise, it means it will go to zero much quicker than the one with the more energy. Okay, so I know students in the past have struggled with this concept of what's actually going on. Okay, so this this is actually quite a nasty question, I won't lie. I had, like I said, it has caused a lot of contention. But it's the idea that explain your answer to I. Now, the example are actually really, really generous where they actually talk about this idea that they will award correct physics even when the answer to the thing before is incorrect. So if you had made an answer incorrect above and justified it with correct physics. So, for example, you could say it had no effect because MGH equals a half MV squared and masses cancel out. Okay, 
you, you would have been awarded marks for talking about that. But the important things that I have mentioned that would be irrespective of what you put in I was actually mentioning where the hell the damping came from. So it's explaining you, you needed to show a demonstration that you understood what caused the damping in the first place. And normally when they're asking you to explain about damping, they want you to identify where it has come from. So when you see an SHM question that goes, explain uh, why the system is more damped than the other one, explain firstly where the damping comes from, what causes it in the first place, unless it's explicit in the question, of course. But in most cases, just to be safe, do explicitly say what is causing the damping effect, okay? So what I did here is I explained that the damping in the system is caused by air resistance. The ring does not affect the area which causes the air resistance, okay? So, of course, if I go quite streamlined like this, okay, less air resistance, if I go like that, I can feel far more air resistance because I've got a bigger area. But the ring sitting on top is not affecting the area that's being affected by the um, uh, air resistance. But what's really happening is because the increase in mass would increase the kinetic energy at a given amplitude. So it's not the fact that it would increase the velocity, it's actually physically that kinetic energy, the value of the kinetic energy, which the air resistance is directly reacting to, would be bigger, okay? So therefore, the like I said up here, if I had a mass of one and a mass of two, okay, so I added the ring and that doubled my mass here, 100 joules and two, if I'm losing 10% per swing, this one here, this smaller mass will tend to zero much quicker than the other one. Okay, so the other one will tend to zero, take longer to get to zero than the other one. So you would say that the system that went to zero quicker is the more heavily damped. Okay, bit of a tricky question, um, but some really key th facts there are talking about when you are explained about damping of a system, first of all, state where that damping has come from. So even if you didn't understand or didn't get that, if they ask you about damping, tell me where that damping comes from and that will score you marks in your exams. So there we have it, quite a tricky, um, simple harmonic question, no maths, just written. So just be aware of these ones. Some really key definitions of force vibrations and resonance. A little bit of a little tidbit about phase and how they're out of phase with each other. Okay, and quite a nasty little thing about damping there.